She's been teaching and consulting on rainwater catchment systems ever since. She heads up the wonderful Hill Country Master Gardeners Rain Barrel Sales Project where they build and sell inexpensive rain barrels for the community and you can get a hold of them through the AgriLife Extension Office and that phone number is on the back on your resources page too. So please welcome me, or please join me in welcoming Anne. Tara, and for, for those of you that haven't been around looking at the edgescape around here, please do so because it is just magnificent what has been created here. And a real, there's every every almost everything you can think of about saving water and getting interrupting stormwater is there. So it's really nice. It's well signed. You, it's it's worth your time. So the areas the areas in in Pierre County that are already apportioned off or mainly for agriculture um, and so there's really going to be an interesting uh, battle going on um, because the majority of the water is is designated for for um, agricultural juice and with, as you can tell um, municipal and industrial are, are the ones that are going to need the water so we have to do something about that, and there are two steps to doing that. And <laughs> as everybody says, proper plant selection. You, want, you don't want to put the plant where you want it, you want to put the plant where it wants to go. Okay? So it, that the right plant at the right place is, is absolutely critical to, to uh, make, having a successful landscape. And the other part is, is harvest rainwater. Rainwater is uh, pH neutral to slightly acid. I don't know if you know what this, our, our uh, water is about 8.2 pH alkaline. Really hard. So if you have hopes of, of trying to change your soil, amend it to change it, the first time you put well water or city water on it, it will go back. So don't even go there. It's a frustrating problem. So basically, we're talking about having a, a landscape that's uh, water-wise that is one-third turf, one-third uh, hardscape, and one-third softscape. So, and, and, and if you like, if you don't like turf, it's perfectly okay not to get it because uh, about sixty percent of the water in the United States is consumed by landscapes. Grass mainly. So the more you can cut down the grass and put in things like you heard Wendy saying, um, the better off you'll be. So we're looking at practical areas, as, as everybody said this morning. Um, what you're trying to do is to replace turf with plants that are going to help with stormwater water management and with um, drought protection. So this is a 9,000 square house. It's got, this is a picture from when it was being designed. It has got all its downspouts go underwater into a rainwater collection system. Quite interesting. As you can see, they all go, go into the ground. And it goes into there. That's the, that's the good news. The bad news is, the evaporation is going to take a lot of that water. So it's, we say it just because to show you that you can do your paint hole and go underground and feed something into a container, but this is probably not the best example of it. Now this one is also so sort of fun. <laughs> <laughs> it works, so you know what the heck. You don't have that fancy stuff to collect rainwater. So it's not new. Rainwater harvesting and collection is not new in any stretch of imagination. It's used in third world countries because they don't have any other water. Um, it's used all over the place. I mean, it's people have been bringing 
catching rainwater. This is Thomas Jefferson's house, and he actually had the insight because he, he had, he loved, I don't know if y'all have ever been in Monticello, but it's gorgeous. And he put in some, some rainwater harvesting things. Nobody knew how to do that at the time, but it's not rocket science. So, um, and then this is a building in Seattle, Washington. It's totally energy neutral. It's net zero waste and water. They've got um, 50, 55,000 gallons of water in their basement that they, that they use for the building. So a lot of, a lot of uh, way to save water and to direct water is by passive collection. And these are certainly a lot of good in, uh, examples of um, passive collection. And you'll find probably most of those, except for the bogs and the ponds uh, and the constructed wetlands here on the edge state. So you can see examples of them. So your, your deal is to try to get your landscape so that your water stays on your land and gets down into the water. Um, if it goes into the storm, when the storm systems, it, it collects stuff off the ground, it collects my favorite term, dry dew from everywhere, and it's not good for your water. So the thing on the left shows you when you don't have much there where it's going to go, and the one on the right shows you if you just put in a little um, yeah, good good um, plans for this, then that they they'll it'll take a lot of water out of the river. So. What they do is to take out, it takes out energy, it increases filtration, it manages storm water, and it also helps with groundwater recharge. So the thing about the educate here is that, I don't know if you, if you go that way, you go up a hill. And if you go this way, you go down a hill. And UGRU is stuck right in the middle of that, and this water would come flying through there, and they, they've done a lot of things to, um, mitigate that situation. It's a lot better than in the care. Yeah. That's why the nasty curves are out there, man. The speed bumps coming in yeah. to help divert some of that water that pours down. So rain gardens are a really nice thing to do. What what they're designed to do is to catch water and keep it off of the streets. Um, so this is an example of a, a a rain garden that can look really nice and they can look sort of in, in, right right now they're looking sort of sad because they haven't had anything to catch. So but you can put all kinds of plants. I don't know if, if any of you are familiar with Billy Niffin. He's a used to be the water guru for AM for Texas and uh, he's a really super guy. But we when I did my training we did it in Menard which is where he was the ag agent and um, they built a pretty big, I don't know how many square foot library, and they put in a pretty small rainwater tank. And the first time they had some rain, the whoops, it went into the neighbor's back house because it just came flying off this big roof. So now he's got a big old rain garden back there and they haven't had that problem with him. I probably shouldn't tell you that, but he doesn't care. So this is a middle school injunction. This is what it looked like. Isn't that impressive? So they got Billy involved in this one, and they started putting in beds, as you can see. And it's not hard to find those rocks in the hill country. <laughs> Pretty cheap if you've got a good back. But they started planting the, the, the garden, and that's the next year. And that's the, that's the way it all sort of looks today. And it's all drip irrigation, which you'll hear about next. Um, and, and it's very been very successful. These are just a bunch of pictures about what a rain garden can do. See, the, a lot of water that's come down has been diminished by all those plants that are there. So, 
Anyway, if you have an issue with, with keeping water on your property, um, a rain garter is a really good way to do. Um, after after the, the first installment of the, of the um, Edgescape, it, it became very obvious that we had to put another, another thing in and put a rain, rain a thing to slow down the water. So, I always like to show these kinds of things. Drought tolerant plants, you know, we have to live with the drought. You know, we have an average rainfall of 32 inches per year in Texas, in Kerbo. Uh, that means that we have 10 inches most of the time, and then we'll have 50 inches one time. And then we go back in the drought. So you might as well start learning how to deal with the drought. So one way to do that is to plant plants that are drought tolerant. And I'm not talking about deer in this, in this talk because deer are going to do what they want to do. I, I don't have a problem with deer because I built an eight, eight foot fence around my property. <laughs> so I don't have to worry about them. But they are a menace, and the people that say they're deer resistant and stuff, that just is not exactly true. Um, they, if they're hungry enough, like they are right now, they'll eat most anything. So, doing rainwater harvesting, this is just a little example of, of a, what they call a complex system. All that means is it has, a, it has a container and it has a way to get the water in there to the plants that they want to have. So, it's pretty interesting. You can collect an awful lot of water off your, off your roof in a short amount of time. So, if you have depending upon what your square foot is, and your square footage is, is designed around your footprint of your house, not about your no, amount of your roof space. For a while there, they were using the amount of the roof space, and that was, not, that was not working out well. So it's the square foot of your home, and one inch of rain times 0.6 gallons, and it's really actually 0.62, but who cares? Um, this is easier. So you can collect 20, 24,000 gallons a year just on a now, the problem with that here in Kirk County is, uh, uh, you know, we don't get it ran very religiously, so you have to be really careful, and you have to size your system if you're going to have one, so that it, it works for you. So this is just the, this is just a, another way of saying what the thing, what happens. So if you have a thousand square foot, you get 42 gallons a minute. And that's all defined by what your gutter size is, how many downspouts you have, and the size of your, of your conveyance piping. So this is one of our rain barrels. <laughs> we don't usually put that thing on the top, but that's just a little bit. So if, if you, if you uh, got an inch of rain on that, that surface right there, you would have 40, um, 19, well, no, excuse me, 11.8 gallons for one inch rain. So you can fill up a tank. The, the rain barrels are really good ways to get started in the rain water collection. So if you want to get crazy, <laughs> you can create all kinds of interesting things. So this demonstrates um, some of the ways you can collect water. Um, the one in your top left, I have to do that because I'm sort of direction and challenge. Um, that's a wildlife buzzer. It's put out in the middle of somewhere, and um, you can use it to, to water wildlife. They, when they introduced the big horned sheep out in West Texas, they had a massive one of these built so that they could provide water to the, the sheep to get them acclimated to, to West Texas. Um, the one underneath that is a and house that has a um, asphalt root, roof. And it, it, if you went down, if the picture went down to the bottom, she's got a garden down there. She, she uh, waters it with, by gravity only. The other, the top right, is Billy Niffin's house. He was, when he moved to Menard to be the ag agent, 
the city re refused to run water out to his house where he wanted to build a house. So he just said, well, okay, I can take care of that. And uh, he's, been, he's been taking care of it. He's got a metal roof. He's got a wonderful landscaping thing. And he gets all of that off of rainwater. And he's been sustaining it. Uh, the middle picture is a greenhouse. It, it was in construction. It's got a tank underneath it. And you can't tell it by this, but it has these little tiny gutters on it. It's really cute. Uh, but it, they're, they're getting that for their greenhouse. And the other picture is the one I already showed you with that big house. So the other components, um, you've got gutters. Uh, if you don't have gutters on your house, you can use rain chains. And you can do uh, rain chains. You can, you can actually buy a rain chain. It's really cute. Or you can go to get a chain chain, attach it to the valley of your roof, and drop it down into the barrel, and you can collect more water that way. So that's not as efficient as a gutter, but it will work. So you can, there's several kinds of ways you do this. There's no one way to do a rainwater harvesting system. You have to have a way to collect the, the stuff that's coming off your roof. And that's usually done through two ways. One are, are screens like there, and those others are for, uh, for well, their first, 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 first collection. And that will be, I'll show you a picture of that on my house when we get there. But you have to have something to keep the, the stuff out of your, because there, you know, as you well know, there's stuff that collects on your roof. So, systems you have, you want to have something to put the water into, um, especially if you're going to store it for a while. So you can you can do like this. You can connect barrels together. You can you can. Um, this cost is not fifty cents. It's gone. <laughs> okay, it's gone, and it's it's more like twenty two twenty five right now. Is what they're they're doing systems used to be it used to be about the cost to drill a well, but it's I think it's gotten with with COVID the stuff has gone up so much. To do. Well, too. <laughs> yeah. So. So is it equivalent to drilling a well or not? There's no there's no comp comparison between the two. Um, one one you're collecting water from the rain, and you you don't have to have anything other than I'll show you a few things you have to have. But there's no nothing to it. It's basically, um, and, and it, you don't have if you don't have an in-house system, you can collect water and get it transported wherever you want it for basically free. Once you you know, so I, I don't really think the two are comparable. The well, well, I have a well too, and so I didn't know about rainwater harvesting when I built my house. So I had a well, still have a well. But I'm really proud of the fact that I don't have to use it very often. So tanks, the cisterns come in all kinds of varieties and shapes and forms, whatever you want, you can probably find it. And if you like to decorate it, you can do that. Now this, this is one way that they, people do collect rainwater. They actually dig a big hole and they um, put tanks underground. Now, in my opinion, in Turk County, I don't think there's enough dynamite <laughs> to get you to be able to do that, so whatever. But it is, a, that is a piece. And that's, that's my favorite one. So, the sister doesn't have something that just stands out, says yucking to you, because it's, it, can, it can be really nice. So, the other thing, uh, is that I would encourage everybody to use drip irrigation. It's the most effective way and efficient way to water your plants. Um, and it's, it's, there's no evaporation involved in it, and it, it, you, you get what you water. So, it, and I'm not going to go into drip irrigation too much because I know the next speaker is, so I'll just be quiet. <laughs> but these are said some of the things you use. So, all the, all the uh, this is back to the um, uh, Junction School. 
Uh, it's all your irrigation that's, that's funding that. So, and this is another way to collect, collect water, if you happen to be in the right place at the right time. But just that, uh, that website right there, rainwater harvesting at PAMU.edu, that's a &M's, uh, rainwater harvesting thing. You can find anything you want to find on that website about rainwater collection. It'll tell you how much water you need to collect, how much water you should collect. The, the most expo expensive part of your rainwater collection system is going to be your, your system, whatever, unless it was like that one that's an old bathtub. Um, but it's going to be there. So the question that I personally get quite a bit is, was what I didn't, I didn't get to build my house. I built a house on my ranch, but I didn't get, I got the well because I was thinking that was my only option. When I learned to, when learned to be a rain, <laughs> rainwater specialist, I said, well, this is sort of dumb, but I'm going to put in a rainwater system in my house because it'll make me feel a lot better. And I, I did, I, I um, this is, my house, and that's the pipes that go around my house. Now, I painted them the same color as my house, and people don't even know that they're there. And so everywhere there's a downspout, where there's the water just goes on through the pipes. So this is an example of the first flush. The water, when the water comes down, it'll go fill that pipe up before it continues on. So after each rain and then I have to empty those those pipes, but I take my buckets and I fill it, <laughs> I still can't keep it. But I have five of those around my house. So, um, and then the, the two, they come, this is where the two sides of the house meet to go down to the tank. My tank is down below, way below the roof side, so I can I don't have to have a pump to, to to get it in the tank. And this is my tank. Wow. That's a 20,000 gallon tank. And um, if you're wondering what that little thing on the bottom is that's going away from the tank, I've got cedar fever. And I thought, well, I'm just not going to collect water during the cedar season, so I don't have to worry about it. And so I put that on there with that theory in mind. But I can't let the water go, so I just deal with the cedar fever. <laughs> But that's, that's a 20,000 gallon tank. But one time it, it overflowed. And that really drove me crazy. So I put a spray tan. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably not the way you're supposed to do it, but it makes me feel a lot better. I'm pretty sure that I've got, I got 36,500 gallons in, in my tank. And I'm pretty sure I'm not going to run out of it. So, and here is all of the stuff that you, in order to bring it in, you can't use the water from straight from rainwater. Now, people argue with me that all the time, and I said, well, if you want to drink it, I'm telling you don't. But you're you, and you can do what you want to do. So, um, but what I do is, this little pump on the bottom, that's my pressure pump. It sucks the water uphill from the tank, puts it, puts it through the filters and the UV light, and then pressurizes it and sends it to the house. And I, I had to use the existing plumbing that I had, so um, I have that worked out to my advantage because if I do need to go back on well water, all I have to do is flip three valves, and I'm back on, on uh, well water. So, before I go, I would like to tell you a couple of things. Um, number one, we are, we're recruiting for our new class for the Master Gardener. So if anybody in the audience is interested in, in applying for that class, I just happen to bring a couple of applications with me. <laughs> so if you are interested, we have, a, we have one class a year. It starts in February and goes to April. And uh, we have 70 hours of, of education. And then you have to have, you add, once you graduate from the class, you have to do 50 hours of community service, 24 of which is answering the research desk at the office. Um, and then you become certified as a master gardener. So it's sort of a time commitment, but it, 
we have a really nice group, a lot of them are here today, and so we, we really enjoy it. So we hope we'll have people join us. The other second thing I'm going to do, we're having a fall uh, demo garden tour and CEU stuff. Um, we're going to have, we have a demonstration garden at the Extension Office, which is on the health, the youth, the country youth event center, and it's, as it, most people have called it the Ag Barn still. We're the little one story building as you go into the thing. We have a demonstration garden that goes all the way down the fence over to the back, and, and um, we, we're pretty proud of it. We, it's, it's designed to teach people how and what plants look like, especially when they're mature. Because as was mentioned earlier, landscapers come in here and put plant, and if it looks good when they put it in first time, it's not going to look good very often. So, you can have some work to do. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Does anyone have a question for Ann? Yes, yeah, all the way. Mm -hmm. I, uh, well, I live down in the county, I don't know. But the slope from where the rain barrel was <laughs> down to the plants, and I didn't have a lot of plants, was only about 15 degrees. So I had no way to, other than if it rained, to get it from point A to point B. So that was, uh, okay, the, the, the question is how to get your water from where you want it to go from the, the cistern and to the, to the other thing. That is, a, is always going to be an issue. Uh, if there's a way to put your barrel or your cistern close to where you want it to go, that's one thing. But that sometimes not works because of the way your house is or your barn or wherever you're putting it. So you just have to figure out, a, um, you can you can get what, uh, no, you can, well you can get a pump and pump to wherever you want to go, but it, it's it's not very hard to do. You can, you can run a, a drip system pretty, pretty well. Um, if it's good, if it's downhill, if it's uphill, you'll have to have a pump. Are you using this purified water for your toilet? Yeah, it's not bad because you feel bad about it when you don't. But when you do a whole house system, it's everywhere. The really good news about it is that it doesn't affect your appliances at all. It's pH neutral, so there's nothing in there. No hard water. No hard water, no iron, no, no nothing but rainwater. But you have to run it through the filters. I, I tell people you have to because you, you usually do, but I, I, I change them once a year whether they need it or not, and I, I always cut them open, and they're very rarely cut any mess in them, because it cuts the first flush it's on the house. I don't know if y'all all saw this, but I, I brought a handout about auditing your home for water water principles. So if you didn't get a, a copy of it, there should be some still some more out there, and I would strongly you take, take it and, and do an audit on your house on, on things like, do you, do you turn off your water when you're brushing your teeth, or do you just let it run? Most people just let it run, but if you turn it off, it's not a big deal, and you save a lot of water. You better put a valve on your shower head. Oh, yeah. Shower. Yes. All right, go ahead, Sarah. When is the demonstration garden open? It is open all the time. Twenty. Now, there is a... There is a um, chain up, but that's because we found some kids riding horses through it one time. And so it's not to keep you guys out, it's to keep the horses out. So um, we do live next to the, the egg barn, so we have to do still strange things like that. But yeah, it's open all the time. All the plants are, are, um, are labeled. And if you want to go on our website, under the demo garden, you can see what plants are there. We have a lot of great resources in the community as well. And I liked Anne's point a lot about, you know, to get started, you just, just think think about what you want to use the water for. I always say don't catch rainwater if you don't need it. There's no, you don't want to go plant and plants afterwards just to have something to put your rainwater on. Uh, <laughs> and then think about where you would want to put your tank. And often, if you're limited in space, that'll kind of dictate the size or the shape of your tank and then kind of working backwards from there. We live in the city, so we don't have a lot of room. We're looking for more decorative uh, cisterns that are over 100, 500. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
gallons, so we can't find it. Did you hear the question? Yeah, where can you find a 500 gallon tank? Anywhere from 100 up. 100 up? Um, there's several vendors around that, that are, are good. Um, uh, there's a little place called Tank Town, somewhere between Austin and here. Don't know where it is. But it, it's, it's um, you can buy tanks and you can find tanks if you Google them. I purchased my tanks. I got 550 behind my house. Just too small, and I bought it from Tanks a lot. And yeah, that was going to be my my other Tanks a lot has more options. I just in my experience of vertical tanks, so um, you worry a little bit. You might have to have a pad with a smaller tank because your um, the weight isn't distributed over a larger area. But I have seen some good good examples that maybe you might consider more decorative um, of those vertical tanks at Tanks a lot. Thank you again, Ian. Yeah.